Welcome back everyone. In today's video we're going to talk about the top 10 hand tools that I use on a daily basis. For most of these I'll indicate a price range on the screen but it's important to know that you can get a lot of these on sale. Even better you can find a lot of these tools at flea markets and garage sales for next to nothing. So with that let's get to it. Number one, hand saws. So I tend to use more Japanese style hand saws. It's a pull action rather than a push action. This marple is one that I've got. The nice thing is the blade is replaceable. You can remove the blade quite easily. It's got a fine tooth side and it's got a rough cut tooth side. So this is also a DeWalt version of that saw. Um, I wouldn't really recommend a lot of DeWalt hand tools. They're not that great. I, it's, it's a solid enough saw, but it doesn't cut as well as my Marple saws. This smaller saw is also a pull saw and it's for finer work. I usually use it for trim. It also has a removable blade. At the same time, when I bought those, the two marples, actually the two other marple saws were bought at the same time as this one. This is also a pull saw, but a different style handle. This is more of a typical general, general carpentry saw, 12 inch, 14 point blade. I don't use it as often as I probably should. This one is actually, this, it's a hybrid of a Western style saw with this handle and a Japanese hand saw. Also removable blade, you get a good hacksaw frame and some decent blades and you can't go wrong. You're going to end up using your hacksaw more often than not, especially when you're building jigs. Number two, hammers. Hammers are readily available. You can find them anywhere. You can pick them up used. You'll find hammers at flea markets. If you're paying more than $20 for a decent hammer, you're paying probably too much. This is probably about a $14 hammer. This one here probably cost me around $25. It's the one I use the most. The hammer you're going to end up using more often is the one that feels right. You know, this one's just got that straight handle. Not as ergonomic, but it'll, it'll still do the job. I probably got five more of these um, in different toolboxes and distributed throughout my shop and my house. Number three, pliers. This is just a few pliers that I have. This is my favorite pair of pliers. This is an adjustable jaw Irwin vice grip. I use this for everything from pulling nails to plumbing jobs to just about everything. It's the best multi-purpose set of pliers that I have. This set is a little cheaper. Again, adjustable jaw. They work okay. I hardly ever pick them up. Here's a classic set of pliers um, with the wire cutters built into them. These I will use for a few different things, but again, I rarely pick them up. They're just good to have in the toolbox. Another set of insulated pliers, particularly useful for wiring work or cutting um, cable. Of course, the needle nose pliers, everybody should have a couple of pairs of needle nose pliers. I don't use these very often. When you need them for a job, they're the only thing that can do the job. Those are the main set of pliers I have. I have other sets of pliers that are distributed through different toolboxes and hanging around in different places. Number four, mallets. For mallets, the, there's... Um, the ones that I bought, like this Dead Blow Mallet by Husky. Once in a while, I'll, I'll take it off the wall and use it. I do prefer to use the mallets that I've made myself. They, they work the best. Uh, I design them for the type of projects that I do. You can make your own Dead Blow or you can just make a nice solid maple mallet like I have. Usually for joinery and fitting is what I use these mallets for. You'll see some woodworkers take a regular hammer and a block of wood and pound things in. I do it if I have to get in close or into a smaller space. I use my big mallet for larger work and then I've got a really simple square mallet. It's nothing fancy, it's just made of scrap maple and I use this actually about 80% of the time uh, because it works, it's the right size for every job. Number five, screwdrivers. Here I'm just showing you a couple um, I actually have a whole wall of screwdrivers that I use right here. 
and these are used on a regular basis. I just took two of them out to show you. The set that I normally use has a, lo a long handle version and a short handle version of each type of screwdriver. So a Phillips head, for example, in the long, long handle format and then a shorter one for getting into tight spaces. I also have a couple of screwdrivers that are adjustable and these are always great to have on hand. I've got the Allen key screwdriver set, which is the red one, and then I've got the standard head screwdriver set, which includes Robertson Phillips and uh, your traditional flat head. So I take these with me on the road if I have to go somewhere quick. These ones stay in the shop because they're right on the wall and I can just grab them whenever I need them. Number six, chisels. These are my favorite and best chisels that I have in the shop. I have other cheaper chisels. For example, I have a set of Irwin chisels that come in a set of five. They're used for rough jobs. And then I've got this DeWalt. It's not really great steel. I am by no means an expert at hand tools and for sure I'm not an expert at chisels, but I'll tell you that over the years that I've learned not to buy cheap chisels. Um, you might be able to find a set of five for $30 um, at the hardware store. Don't buy them. It's much better to go online and see if you can find a deal. Like, for example, the Emile Perron chisels from France um, I bought on Lee Valley online. It was $105 for a set of four. If you want, you can make handles for them, although I just use the painted steel handle. It works just fine. These are really great bench chisels. Um, I do recommend them for the price. You can't go wrong. The next I've got a couple of Japanese bench chisels. This is an old one. This is probably from the 1950s, maybe even older. I got this on eBay. It is by far one of the best chisels I own. It has excellent quality steel that just isn't made anymore. I use it on a weekly basis. You cannot go wrong with the older Japanese steel chisels. This is a newer one. This is a brand new chisel, but again, good quality steel. And again, I got this one off eBay. There's a few different vendors on eBay that sell Japanese tools. Although now with the popularity of these tools, the price tends to go up. So you really got to shop around for a bargain. This one here is another Japanese chisel. It is a mortising chisel. This is an older one. So I'm starting to get addicted to shopping around. Every now and again, I will look for a few more of these and I will keep expanding my collection of Japanese chisels because the performance of these chisels is just amazing and um, I've never been disappointed. If anybody out there has a connection uh, or a good source for Japanese hand tools, let me know in the comments below. You'll be my friend for life. These two chisels here I picked up at flea markets on separate occasions, but I wouldn't spend more than $10 at a flea market for sure. Um, this one I've had to clean up quite a bit. It's ideal if the wood on the handles are not rotten. Ideally you want the steel to be in good shape and you can tell if it's decent steel. If it's tarnished a little bit, that's okay. Um, you can clean that up and um, you can definitely refit a new handle on it. I'll probably do a video at some point on how I restore some of these tools. This was one of my dad's old chisels. Um, I don't know what happened to the rest of his chisels. I know he had more of these and he might have had a full set, but this is the only one I had left. This is a Swedish chisel. It was probably made in the 1930s. Um, I did a, I was able to sharpen up pretty well and reshape the tip. Fantastic quality. I mean, again, the machining in the tool steel and the quality that you get in some of these older chisels are absolutely amazing and you just don't get that anymore. Number seven, bench planes. One of the coolest ones is this little block plane that I use for um, trim. So I use this for trim work and any small job that I need to do. So this actually comes in incredibly handy and they're really inexpensive. This next one is a spoke shave. This is one I bought and I haven't really used it a lot yet, but I plan on using it more uh, to make handles and for shaping. The two bench planes that I have here, see if you can guess which one is the cheaper one. Okay, time's up. Yes, if you guess footprint, you were right. This is a knockoff of the one that's beside it, the Stanley. This is a number four Stanley Bailey bench plane. It is uh, the staple bench plane in every workshop, I think. Basically, the footprint is a, a crappier version of the Stanley plane. So learn this lesson from me. The difference in price 
was about $25. The Stanley number four plane is about $75. That's what I bought it for brand new and it's 100% worth every penny. You can pick them up sometimes used at flea markets for a lot less. One of the things I've started collecting are Japanese hand planes as well. Like the Japanese saws, these are a pull action, not a push action like Western planes. A classic design, but it is a brand new hand plane. Again, I bought it off a supplier from eBay. Number eight, measuring tools. For measuring and for marking, there are a few essential tools. For me, the combination square is an essential tool because it just has so many uses and it's adjustable. I used it um, starting when I was a welder 25 years ago and uh, now in woodwork, I use it all the time as well. So I've never not had one. And without question, I use this every day. Another thing that I use is my speed square. Although I use the speed square a little less often, um, a speed square is going to help you. And there are a lot of little secret tricks to using the speed square. Again, another essential tool. Another thing you'll wanna have in your shop is a marking gauge. Here is a simple marking gauge it's fairly inexpensive. This is a wooden one which basically has a steel spike on one end and an adjustable fence. I bought it at Lee Valley Online. This was made in Sheffield, England. A decent quality wooden marking gauge, fairly inexpensive. I also have this pocket marking gauge which I use regularly as well. This has two adjustable heads. It's got a small marking blade on either end. This last one is more of an antique. This is an old Scandinavian marking gauge, probably made in Denmark around the 1920s or 30s. This is one I'm in the process of restoring. The wood is in pretty rough shape. I was unable to find a picture of one of these online. I googled around to see if anybody else had one of these because it's such an unusual marking gauge. Maybe somebody in the comment section below can tell me um, something about it if they know anything about antique tools, but it's a really cool thing. I might even try to replicate this and make my own version of it. It comes with this other, this wooden wedge. See if we can see that on the camera. What you're supposed to do, I suppose, is and once I've set the gauge the way I want it, I just push that wedge in and it holds it in place. Simple wooden device, the only piece of metal on it is really the brass plate here and the brass screws and the steel marking spikes. That's it. Number nine, wrenches. Get yourself a really good ratchet set, just one decent ratchet set. This is a Stanley ratchet set. You're gonna see them at Home Depot, Harbor Freight. If you're in Canada, you're gonna see them at Canadian Tire. They go on sale constantly. This is my favorite ratchet set. I own several ratchet sets. One stays in my truck all the time. Um, this one stays in my shop. What I like about this ratchet set is it is in metric and imperial. So I have a set in the in imperial measurements. It's a, basically a dual socket set. The Allen wrenches that come with it too. My Imperial and I've got my metric ones at the top here. Okay, well woodworking, when do I need this for? Sooner or later you're going to use carriage bolts. You're going to use, uh, if you're building jigs, you're going to need to work with different kinds of hardware. Anything from building tables to uh, maintaining tools around the shop. The other thing that I use a couple of crescent wrenches. These crescent wrenches hang on my wall. This one is adjustable. It's got a, a good torque control on it. What I like these for is I can get into places that I couldn't normally get into with say my um, socket wrenches or my Allen wrenches. So if I've got a Phillips head screw that I'm trying to get at, when I was recalibrating my miter saw recently, you can see where the orange tab is here. You're not getting in there with anything. You're not going to get in there with a screwdriver or a socket wrench. But with the screwdriver bit in the jaws of the crescent wrench, so I can now fit in here and tighten up that screw. Number 10, knives. So you're gonna end up picking up a few of these over the years. This Stanley one is sort of a revamped version of the old classic utility knife. The blade storage is on the inside of the handle. You can of course swap out the blades quite easily, pop them in, close the handle. This sometimes can go loose on you when you're trying to cut and things can go sideways, so I don't use it a lot. This little Milwaukee was 
kind of cool when I saw it in Home Depot. And it worked pretty good at first. I mean, it was fairly sharp. I broke the tip off of it at some point. I don't really use it that much anymore. I probably could use a sharpen. The other utility knife that I have, so these little utility knives are actually pretty good. This one I use the most. Um, it might be frustrating for some people. I actually don't mind it. It's got a lock back blade, so it goes in your pocket just fine. This is probably from the 1920s or 30s. This is a Swedish leather and upholstery knife. I'm not one of these guys that inherited a whole cache of really cool tools. Um, I got a few odds and ends and that's about it. And this is one of those things. Here it says Swedish steel. It's pretty tarnished, so it does need a good cleanup, but the quality of the steel is unbelievable. This will cut through just about anything and I use it all the time. It's one of my favorite knives. The next knife I want to show you is my little lockback Gerber. This knife I've had for about 25 years. It's just an all-around decent knife. It's not a utility knife per se, but it's just an everyday useful knife. It holds an edge pretty well. That's pretty much how I judge knives um, in general. It might, might be my layman's way of judging knives and the design of it too. The design of the blade is really great. It's functional. I've never had any problems with it, so it's kind of my old faithful. That concludes my top 10 list of hand tools that I use on a daily basis. If you have any ideas or suggestions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to support this channel, head over to my Patreon page down here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe up here if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching and have a great day.